Today, I'll be reacting to the new Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves movie trailer that released at San Diego Comic-Con, and we have some miniatures to talk about. I'm Angela, you're watching Hobby Night, now let's get into this week's Hobby News. All right, I thought we would start this week's news episode by watching the Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves video trailer that came out at San Diego Comic-Con because I have not seen it yet and I figured I'd take you along the ride. So we're going to watch through it and then I'll probably talk a little bit over it as I see things that, you know, interest me and we'll have a little bit of a longer discussion probably afterwards because I imagine there'll be some interesting things in this. Let's get to the beginning and get started. Whoa. Wait, 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 wait. I don't know if I was fully at the beginning. I just want to make sure. Okay. All right. All right. Here's the thing. We're a team. Looks thieves. like we've got a bard, this. a fighter, You're bound to make maybe a rogue, and I assume some sort of caster. Sometimes like I imagine there's going to be some sort of wizard or druid or something like that. Ooh. Oh, I like the dragons. I also like the sound effect for the like flame or whatever he's spitting out. Truth be told, we helped the wrong person steal the wrong thing. Okay, so it's that kind of story. They they got something that they shouldn't have for somebody bad. But we're gonna fix it. So how do we pull that off? Figure it out over a drink. Probably best. You need okay. Okay, he's definitely a bard. He had a lute on his back. You got this, right? Yeah, that's yeah, definitely a lute or some sort of instrument. Barbarian, maybe? Courage. Paladin or warrior? Or fighter? There's always an owl bear. There's always an owl bear. Like what is that again? It's an owl bear. Wait, he doesn't know what an owl bear is? I find that unusual, especially considering I'm pretty sure he's a bard. I feel like he would know that. I'm glad he's on our side. This one's dangerous. Oh, oh, cool, a mimic. That's awesome. Oh, wait a minute. Did, did they just... We're gonna talk about that. We'll be right. We're gonna talk about that here in a second because I'm pretty sure they just jumped into a gelatinous cube, which doesn't seem like something you'd want to do. And I am mildly confused. Bring to this? I'm a planner. I make plans. You've already made the plan, so... If the existing plan fails, I make a new plan. So you make plans that fail? No. He also plans... I mean... Not relevant. <laughs> okay, so definitely a bard with that little bit at the end because he had not relevant a lovely little loot and he did a little jaunt okay i'm intrigued by this but probably not in the ways that they want me to i really was kind of hoping when i heard about this i want to see where is that gelatinous cube scene okay the owl bear is cool although i will admit i swear Every single D and D thing that comes out that is meant to appeal to a larger, more generalized audience inevitably always, always, always has to use the owl bear. And while I admit it's super cute, could we find some other creatures to maybe play around with? Although it is cool that she like I guess polymorphs into it or something. Um, I guess this must be a druid or something like that. But the thing that I really want to look at is when we're in okay somewhere around here first of all the mimic's great look at that tongue oh it's so good i love mimics they're fantastic um and that looks like especially okay that that is definitively a gelatinous cube there is even a dead person inside of it what is this is this a displacer beast yes i don't i'm convinced that this bard is not a very good bard because he doesn't know what an owl bear is, which I feel like everybody in this world should know what an owl bear is. And then these two decide to jump into a gelatinous cube to avoid a displacer beast. I'm pretty sure, like, I don't know the stats specifically of a displacer beast, but I'm pretty sure they're definitely safer than jumping into a gelatinous cube, which I'm pretty sure you can't get out of on your own. You'd have to have outside assistance because it kind of just sucks you in. So that's really weird to me. Um that they're doing that. 
overall though like it looks fun like there's i i want to know if he's a paladin or not because he looks really cool and i and i'm i'm digging this particular character he also doesn't seem like he's part of the party initially and maybe gets added in for whatever to help probably stop whatever evil they've unleashed um i do love all of the uses of magic like that's really cool to see but i do feel like this is a very generic feeling trailer for a DD themed movie i was kind of hoping honestly for something a bit more meta like almost like the lego movies in where um and you. like they acknowledge uh that they're in a universe like i really wish that these guys acknowledge that these monsters and characters and things that they are fighting had stats and that their weapons had like specific stats and all that kind of stuff whereas instead it's just sort of set in this world and they live here he knows nothing which is very weird and i really wish it had a little bit more of that meta vibe to it let me know what you guys are thinking about this particular trailer because i know that there's been a lot of thoughts about it I'm still probably going to watch it because I'm just kind of intrigued, but I don't know if it's something that's ultimately going to be the most amazing D&D themed movie I've ever seen in my life. So we'll have to see, but let's get to the rest of the news now. First up for the regular news, now that we've taken a look at that delightful and I, I still don't know how I feel about it fully trailer of D the new Dungeons and Dragons movie. Let's actually talk about some miniatures. And the first thing that we need to talk about is a new vehicle coming for the Votan called the Sagittar. And frankly, I have mixed feelings about it. On one hand, I really, really like the aesthetic. I think it's kind of cool. It's different. It has this, a lot of texture. It's very chunky. And I think that's going to be a lot of fun to paint. So I think there's a lot of opportunities there. Plus there are three different head options for the driver, all of which I think are wonderful. On the other hand, however, despite my enjoyment of the aesthetic, I don't know if I actually feel like it fits the 40K universe very well, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I don't really mind Games Workshop trying to introduce a new aesthetic. However, I worry that if it doesn't perform super well in the very beginning, that Games Workshop may not support it for long term. And then we're going to be left with what I feel like has kind of happened to the Tau, where there are definitely some people who love it and they're still supported kind of, but very, very seldomly. And when it does happen, it's not really the same level that say chaos or space Marines get, or even some of the other Xeno races, which is kind of a shame. And I don't want to see that happen to the Votan because I think they're very cool. I am mildly concerned though, like I said, that it's not going to perform well because it doesn't exactly fit the grim, dark grittiness that I think we as fans are sort of used to for this product. To me, it actually reads a little bit more almost Infinity or Halo-esque, which is cool and I don't mind, but ugh, I don't know how it's going to perform. We have some new minis coming from Necromunda next, and I love them in one in particular actually Vunder Gorvos and his sister Gain who are from the I think House Gorvos or um, Gorvos Crime Syndicate that's what their name was they look amazing but but Gunder or Vunder sorry that's his name Vunder he's stunning I actually thought at first it was a woman because of the way that they've painted his face and how just like up his cheekbones are and his outfit. It just gives me this sort of older woman fashion icon diva lady who's gone into a life of piracy. And I just think it's amazing. The fact that I found out it was a guy, I was like, oh, oh, I've he's like gone up a notch because he just is even that much more flamboyant. And I just think this pair is lovely. They are coming to Forge World soon. Um, we don't have an official announcement date of when they'll be available, but I'm looking forward to seeing what people do with them. Last but not least this week, we need to talk about the range update coming to Battle for Middle-Earth. I almost forgot the name of the Lord of the Rings title that Games Workshop carries. They have a little bit of a miniature range update happening. Some things are being removed, some things are being added. Notably from the removals, we are losing Thorin Oakenshield, as well as the orc that he fought in the movie, Azog. And we also are losing Faramir, which I kind of thought was interesting. However, we are gaining a variety of new models as well, including the return of Boromir on his horse. I do think we have the normal just standing figure now, but the horse 
uh, figure is returning. And then we also have a variety of models from a line that I'm actually not familiar with within the game called the Mahad. I actually think these guys look really cool. They have a little bit more of a tribal, um, like there's a lot of reeds and really interesting textures on these models. And as I was looking at this particular article and looking through these Lord of the Rings figures, it dawned on me like how much variety Games Workshop actually provides amongst its figures. Like you've got the really clean look from the Space Marine side with Warhammer 40K, everything there, while there is some greediness and sometimes like the chaos stuff has a little bit of like tentacles and drippiness, everything overall, with the armor designs tends to be a little sleeker, a little cleaner, right? Then you move into Age of Sigmar where you start to get some textures, but it's still relatively clean and it's almost going into a World of Warcraft vibe with how like big and chonky everything is. But then you look at like Lord of the Rings, which is what we're talking about today, and you get a lot more natural textures and you get a bit more realism, which I think is very cool to see just the depth that the designers that work for Citadel actually have. I don't think it gets complimented quite as much as maybe they deserve, just seeing how much they can do and what they're actually able to produce, including the people who work at Forge World, because I know a lot of the Lord of the Rings figures, as well as some of the like their other game systems like Necromunda and Blood Bowl all end up going through Forge World, ugh, Forge World as well. But the whole team, like just everybody involved, they do great work. All right, that has been it for this week in Hobby News. We looked at a lovely trailer. We talked about a few miniatures. And before I head out and thank my patrons, I do want to give you a little hint of what's coming this week on the channel because we're going back into the world of Star Wars. I want to paint some Legion miniatures. We're gonna be playing with some more contrast paint. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are too. Now, before I leave, I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons for making it so content like this can continue to happen. Without your guys' support, we wouldn't be doing this. So thank you very, very much. I have been Angela, and I hope you have a wonderful hobby night. For the world. I was possessed by Cthulhu for a moment.